As always, so much happening in our nation's capital. For more, let's bring in Hawaii News Now Washington correspondent John Decker. John, thank you so much for joining us. Always enjoy talking with you. Uh, let's start with this. Uh, significant legislation passed over the weekend. Now, President Biden and Speaker McCarthy uh, are each claiming victory for the bipartisan debt ceiling deal. Uh, are they both winners for this deal? Well, President Biden seems to think so. He's taking a victory lap to that speech on Friday after the conclusion of the vote in the Senate, indicating that this would be successful legislation to make it to his desk. But Kevin McCarthy, the House Speaker, also uh, taking credit for what he sees as a victory. After all, think about where we were one full month ago when President Biden and the White House, the individuals who speak on his behalf, saying there would be no negotiations at all concerning the debt ceiling. And that's exactly what happened. So, uh, in fact, Republicans extracted a number of concessions uh, by Democrats, by President Biden during the course of those negotiations. And now we won't have to talk about the debt ceiling issue for another two years. That's how long the debt ceiling extension lasts until 2025. Yeah, it's the perfect definition of a compromise, right? Uh, each side, nobody gets really what they want. Uh, but, you know, d deeping into this, uh, what is contained in the legislation? And are there some Democratic and Republican lawmakers uh, that are disappointed with the agreement? Well, there are some budget cuts contained in this. Uh, in fact, that is something that very much disappoints progressives in the president's party. Also, in addition to that, there uh, is approval for a new oil pipeline that runs through the states of both West Virginia and Virginia. That, too, is disappointing to a number of progressives. One of the reasons why uh, Senator Bernie Sanders and Senator Elizabeth Warren both voted against this debt ceiling agreement. Uh, but there's also disappointment among Republicans as well, Mark. Those members of the House Freedom Caucus believe that there were not enough concessions extracted by House Speaker Kevin McCarthy during the course of his negotiations. And always looking ahead to 2024 now. Uh, it's our expectation that this week we'll see two new Republicans enter the race uh, for the GOP presidential nomination. Uh, who's announcing this week and what are their chances? Two names announcing their candidacy this week. Two names to challenge Donald Trump for the Republican nomination. One is former Vice President Mike Pence. The other, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. Let me talk about both of them briefly. As it relates to Mike Pence, uh, it's going to be an interesting dynamic. Never before has a former vice president challenged a former president, his former boss, for the GOP nomination. So we'll see a first there. Uh, it's going to be a narrow path that Mike Pence needs to uh, weave in terms of becoming the Republican nominee. But he's counting for a strong showing in Iowa, the first state that votes in the process. And as it relates to Chris Christie, it will be his second run for the GOP nomination. He dropped out early in 2016, immediately threw his support behind Donald Trump. This time around, he's one of his strongest critics. And for Chris Christie, he believes that he can do well in New Hampshire, and that will provide momentum to his candidacy. But let's face it, the front runner uh, for all Republicans right now is Donald Trump. That's who these challengers need to knock off or at least make it a two-person race in order to challenge Mr. Trump for the Republican nomination. Such a complex and fascinating dynamic. Hawaii News Now Washington correspondent John Decker. John, thank you very much for joining us.